In this video, I'm going to show you a technique that you can use to take the square root of a decimal number, particularly if there's an even number of digits. For example, what do you think the square root of 0 0.09 is equal to? What do you think the answer is? Well, we know that the square root of 9 is 3, so the square root of 0 0.09 must have something to do with 3. Notice the number of digits after the decimal point. So there's two digits to the right of the decimal point. Your final answer is going to have a 3, and it's going to have one digit to the right of the decimal point. It's going to be half the number of digits. So if you have two digits to the right of the decimal point, it's going to be 1 after you take the square root. If you have four digits, it's going to go down to 2. If you have six digits, it's going to be half of that, which is 3 and 8 digits is going to turn into 4. So since we have two digits, we're going to have a decimal point and one number after the decimal point. So the square root of 9 is 3. This is going to be 0 0.3. And you could type this in your calculator. This technique works. Let's try another example. So what is the square root of 0 0.0016? What's the answer? So we know that the square root of 16 is 4. And because we have four digits to the right of the decimal point, our final answer is going to contain only two digits to the right of the decimal point. So it's going to be 0 0.04, which contain two digits. Now you want to put the 4 as far as you can to the right. You don't want to put the 4 here. Put it at the very end. Now, if you take your calculator and if you type in the square root of 0 0.0016, you're going to get 0 0.04. So now let's work on some other examples. Try this one. So what is the square root of 0 0.000025? So we know that the square root of 25 is 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. Now, how many digits do we have to the right of the decimal point? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So after the decimal point, we need to have only 3 digits. So it's going to be 0 0.005. Put the 5 at the very end. So let's confirm it with the calculator. If I type in square root 0 0.000025, I'm going to get 0 0.005. Now what about this one? What is the square root of 0 0.000081? So first, let's find the square root of 81. What number times itself is 81? We know that 9 times 9 is 81, so the square root of 81 is 9. Now, how many decimal or how many digits do we have to the right of the decimal point? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. So our final answer should have 4 digits to the right of the decimal point. So it's going to be 0 0.0009. And let's confirm it. The square root of that number is indeed 0 0.0009. Now let's try a larger number. What is the square root of 0 0.000144? So what's the answer in this particular case? So we know that the square root of 144 is 12. And we have three digits, I mean six digits, to the right of the decimal point. Therefore, 6 digits divided by 2 will give us 3. So our final answer needs to have 3 digits to the right of the decimal point. So we got to add 12. So 0 0.012. The last number should be at the very end. So if you type it in, the square root of 0 0.000144, you indeed get 0 0.012. 
So now you know how to take the square root of a decimal number if the number of digits is even. Now let's understand why it works. Let's go back to this example. Point zero 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 eighty one. How can we convert this particular decimal number into scientific notation? It's not going to be in proper scientific notation because I want 81, not 8.1. It's easier to square root 81. But let's say if we move the decimal 8 units to the right, we want it to be after the 1. How would you write it in scientific notation? So this is going to be 81 times 10 to the negative 8. Whenever you move the decimal point to the right, the exponent is going to decrease. So it's going to go down from 0 to negative 8 because we moved it right, we moved it to the right um, 8 spaces. By the way, if you ever forget the rules or if you find it difficult to keep track of direction and how it affects the exponent, just remember, if you have a number in scientific notation and if the exponent is negative, it typically represents a number less than 1. So you're going to have a decimal point and a bunch of zeros. If it's a positive number, then it's going to be a number greater than 1. For example, 4.2 times 10 to the 3 is a very large number. This is equal to 4200. 10 to the 3rd is basically 10 times 10 times 10 3 times, which is 1000. And 4.2 times 1000 is 4200. So notice that from 4.2, we move the decimal 3 units to the right, going backwards. So if the exponent is positive, it represents a large number. So the opposite is true. If the exponent is negative, it represents a small number. For example, 3.6 times 10 to the negative 4 is the same as 0 0.00036. If you move the decimal 4 units to the right, you're going to get this number. So a number in scientific notation that has a negative exponent represents a very small number between 0 and 1. So now let's evaluate the square root of this number in scientific notation. So we can separate these two parts into two separate square roots. So this is equal to the square root of 81 times the square root of 10 to the negative 8. The square root of 81 is 9. And what about the square root of 10 to the minus 8? What can we do there? Now the index number is a 2. To convert from radical form to exponential form, this is going to be 10 raised to the negative 8 divided by 2. So the 8 digits will be divided by 2, and you're going to get 4 digits. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. So this is equal to 9 times 10 to the negative 4. So if you want to convert 9 times 10 to the negative 4 into a decimal number, here's what you need to do. So we know conceptually that we need to get a number less than 1. So we don't want to move the decimal point to the right, which will lead to a bigger number. If we want a smaller number, we want to move the decimal to the left. So if you have 9, you want to move it 4 units to the left. So now the decimal is going to be over here, and then we need to add 3 zeros. So therefore, 9 times 10 to the minus 4 is the same as 0 0.009, which is what this is equivalent to. So that's why if you divide the 8 digits by 2, you're going to get 4 digits. It has to do with this step. Because when you divide an exponent, when you take the square root of an exponent, you divide it by 2. Now let's try the other example. The square root of 0 0.000025 which we said it was 0 0.005. So what is this number in scientific notation? How can we convert it? So notice that we need to move the decimal 6 units to the right. So this is the same as 25 times 10 to the minus 6. Now granted, this is not purely in proper scientific notation form, because in proper scientific notation, this number is between 1 and 10. But in this example, we want 25 because we can square root 25. 
So this is equal to the square root of 25 times the square root of 10 to the minus 6. Now the square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of 10 to the negative 6 is negative 6 divided by 2, which is negative 3. So we have 5 times 10 to the minus 3. So starting with 5, here's the decimal. The negative 3 tells us that it's going to be a small number less than 1. So we need to move the decimal point to the left. So this is 1, 2, 3. So now the decimal point is here. So we're going to add two zeros to fill these two spaces. And notice that this answer is the same as that answer. So you can solve it either way, but dividing the number of digits to the right of the decimal by 2 is a much simpler method. But I wanted to explain it using scientific notation. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.